Just Can you turn the audio down so I don't get a big feedback there? Hi. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I hope we're live. Um, I'm James. I'm Lily. <laughs> Not the Lily, though. So we're, um, we're here to do a live cook-along for the Lily Foundation. Um, we've been doing these cook-alongs now for four weeks. Um, uh, because a friend of ours said um, maybe I could help them do some cooking for their kids when this lockdown started. Jess Dibble. Uh, that was Jess, big fan of the Lily Foundation, so hi Jess. Uh, and since then we've been doing cook-alongs every Sunday. Um, this is now one we're going to do live for the Lily Foundation uh, on YouTube. So hello everybody who's joined us. Hopefully you've got the right link. I know um, we had some technical issues yesterday. Um, but we're going to get started. And I want to introduce Poppy. This is Poppy. Uh, she's got mitochondrial disease. Um, and uh, she's uh, the youngest of my two daughters, and there's another member of our family, right, Lily? Yep, we've got a new member of the family. So I'm just going to introduce you to our latest member of the family, uh, born only eight weeks ago. No. Um, eight weeks yesterday. And his name's this Monty. This is Monty. This is Monty, uh, and he's. You can see him. Very cute. So. Um, eight weeks old, aren't you, Monty? So we'll keep him away from the cooking, otherwise he might end up in the cookies. Right, Poppy, we wouldn't want to cook Monty, would we? She thinks we probably would. Now, before we get started, um, the real reason we're here, of course, is to actually raise some money for the Lily Foundation. So, um, there's a link on Just Giving. There's also a link to this uh, page at the bottom of this YouTube stream. So if you read in the comments, you'll see a little, uh, a little link to this page. This is the uh, Just Giving page for... Um, this virtual activity hub. Um, if you go to Just Giving and just search for the Butterfly Club or for the Lily Foundation, you'll find a link. And thanks to those who've already made a donation, I think uh, some good friends of ours, uh, Rachel Richards, has already kicked this off. So uh, that's amazing. Thank you. Uh, let's hope we can raise a bit more money as we go through today and we go through uh, all the other live events that the Lily Foundation have got going on. Hopefully, some of you join Josh and Alex for the quizzes. Uh, we certainly did. That was a lot of fun. Um, but now we're going to do a bit of uh, a bit of baking. Cooking. So, Lily, what are we making? Corona chocolate chip cookies. Corona cookies, absolutely. Now, hopefully, you've, you've all hands. got the ingredients. Uh, I'm going to put the ingredients up on the page here as well, so you can see what we need and the amounts that we need. So, whilst you're doing that, get your ingredients ready. We're going to wash our hands. I just washed them. So I've just put the ingredient list up there, so if you guys can see that, that's the ingredients we're going to need. Um, For the Corona cookies. So we're going to start with some salted butter. Uh, hopefully you've got it nice and softened, and 150 grams of salted butter. You're going to need 80 grams of light muscovado sugar, but any brown sugar will do, or otherwise just any sugar. Um, another 80 grams of granulated sugar, so 160 grams of sugar in total, depending on what you've got in the cupboard. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract. One large egg. Uh, 225 grams of plain flour. Half a teaspoon of bicarb of soda. Quarter of a teaspoon of salt, not too much, otherwise you'll go salty. And 200 grams of plain chocolate chips. Now, we just smashed up an Easter egg because uh, we had too many. Um, so too many. Hopefully no one's been out to the shops specifically um, to get this stuff. Just use what you've got in the cupboard. Yeah. Uh, but let's get started, shall we? So, we're going to add the... Butter. So you can either mix this by hand. We're going to mix it in a mixer because we're lazy. Um, well, Lily's lazy. Uh, well, I'm not lazy. A little bit. So we're going to add the butter into a bowl, and we're going to add the sugar. So I've already got the sugar here, but I'll let you guys catch up. So 80 grams of brown sugar, 80 grams of normal sugar, 160 grams in total. They're all mixed there together. So we're going to get that mixed up into a nice squidgy paste. Uh, we'll it has get to be that. light and fluffy. Light and fluffy. So sorry for the noise there. If my mixer is going a bit crazy. And don't forget, um, don't forget to get your ovens preheated up and warmed up to 190 degrees. If you haven't done that and you are cooking along at home, and I hope you are, um, then please do get your ovens nice and warmed up, 190 degrees. We're just going to let that butter and sugar all mix together nicely. OK, 
Okay. How are we getting on so far? Good. Now, whilst your butter and sugar is mixing, we'll let that continue to mix. Lily, can you crack an egg? We're going to mix an egg. Whisk up an egg. And we'll whisk it up with two teaspoons of vanilla extract, if you've got that. If you haven't, don't worry too much. It's not the end of the world. into the drawer. Uh, two teaspoons of vanilla extract. <laughs> Lily, can you mix that up? No. Why in the egg? Oh, in the egg, right. Let's give it a nice mix. Meanwhile, the butter and sugar should be nice and mixed together, nice and soft, nice and squidgy. Don't forget, I think this one will be recorded as well, so you can always follow along later uh, if you haven't got all your ingredients ready. Did you put brown and white sugar in from the Brown and white sugar in at the same time. Mix that up with the butter till it's nice and soft. With the butter? Yep. Sugar. Sugar, it, butter. And the butter all together. And make sure you try some. Right, So, we're then going to take the egg mixture, so you just mixed up one egg with a bit of vanilla extract, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and we're going to pour that into the butter and sugar mixture. Good. And get that all mixing together nicely. Mm Great. Now, by the way, when we get these things in the oven, um, what we do on a Sunday when we do our cook along on Zoom is we do a little quiz. We're going to run a, a little quiz, quiz on Kahoot. So, in order to play along, you're going to need a mobile phone or something else um, other than whatever you're watching YouTube on right now. So, another device, a phone, a tablet. Yeah. Um, you could use another browser at the same time, another window. Um, so, if you want to play along, all the details will be shared in a minute. Um, I'm going to try and do a live Kahoot quiz over YouTube, see how that works out. But uh, a little fun quiz for the family, 10 questions, should be just enough time for these uh, cookies to get in the oven and cook. Uh, and then when they're done, someone will, will have won the quiz and, uh, and the cookies will be ready. Happy days. So, right, what's next, Lily? Um, You've no idea, have you? So, I know, <laughs> fortunately I know, we're gonna, put the we're gonna put the flour into the mixing bowl. So we've got the sugar in there, we've got the butter in there, the eggs got in there with the vanilla. You're going to put your flour in there now. And then you're going to put the chocolate And we're going to put half a teaspoon of bicarbonate soda. Quarter of salt. And a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Do you have a quarter teaspoon? No, we'll just do a bit of that. Wait. Um, and we're going to get that all mixing up together. Because then you can have a taste. I'm going to take a moment. I'm just going to scrape down the edges of that cookie dough a little bit. Should start to look just like a yummy cookie dough by now. Just scrape the edges a bit, make sure oh, it's all nicely half mixed up. Cookie dough. Half thick cookie dough. Really sticky and yummy. Sticky and gorgeous. Is that a final mix together? Excellent. Cool. How's everyone doing? Following along there. Hopefully you're all doing good. So, the final touch, and these are super simple, is we're just going to add some chocolate chunks chocolate now lot. into this mixture. I'm to doing that then. So Lily. If you can pour that in, I'm just going to scrape all the mixture off the uh, off the mixer there. Nearly, you pour the chocolate. This is just an Easter egg that we smashed up with a rolling pin. So chuck that all in. Any chocolate will do. Just break it up. Let's try not to eat too much of it on the way in. 
and uh, away we go. Stick that back in the mixer. And get it all going nice. Fantastic. Yummy, scrummy cookie dough there. And you should have something. Like that. A bit like that. Give it a lick. Mm. I will. Um, That's good. Like kind of like that. Chocolatey yumminess. It's really good. Then you just need to get a wooden uh, wooden spoon or a metal spoon, and you're just going to make little lumps of cookie mixture to put out onto a uh, baking tray. So hopefully everyone's keeping up. Let me know if you, how you're getting on any comments there, live comments on the YouTube. Um, obviously to cook this, we're gonna need some baking trays. So grab a baking tray and line it with a little piece of baking paper. And we're gonna put some dollops of cookie dough onto the baking paper and then we'll get it in the oven. So I'll just let you guys catch up on that one if you're following along at home. If you're following along later, then hopefully you've got all the ingredients out already and you're ready to go. Lily, you're gonna spoon that out to small little spoons yeah, can I cookie mixture. Mouth, so. No. It's quite thick. Too much? Yeah, too much. Just a little one. Just kind of a small, just bigger than a teaspoon. Maybe a kind of tablespoon size. I saw that. And just make it into a little round dollop and just there plunk it on the tray. And we're just going to dot this out into a whole series mm. of. Now, don't put them too close to each other because when they're in the oven, they're going to melt, they're going to go all flat and squishy, and they're going to expand on the, on the paper there. So just dot them out. You can make them any size you want, really. Um, We're making them about kind of that size. These are kind of about the size of a 50p in a blob, and then when, they, when they're cooked, they'll be bigger and flatter than that, of you course. You do 50p's are flat. I do know that, yeah. And it'll be like five degrees that. But you know. That's too round, isn't it? You can't come. So once you've got these laid out, we're gonna get them into the oven. Now I haven't you know, this is not some professional here's one I made earlier. We're gonna put these in the oven, we're gonna cook them in real time, and whilst they're cooking, we're gonna play a little quiz. Kahoo! So I've got two trays here, which should be just about perfect. Do let me know how you're getting on. Yeah. Post any comments you want in the live comments there. Hopefully the stream's working, you guys can see what's going on. If it's a bit delayed, then hopefully you can hear us. There we go. Now those of you who aren't familiar with the Lily Foundation, do check out their website, go and have a look at all the great and amazing things they do, either funding research, uh, driving awareness of the condition, because it's pretty rare. Um, Poppy here is one of a very few children in the UK who's got a mitochondrial disease, so uh, awareness is a problem. Uh, doctors don't really know too much about it. And of course, research is really important and they also support families as well with all sorts of events and great things. So, um, fantastic charity. Uh, we've certainly uh, very much enjoyed being part of their charity and their wider family. Um, so please do check them out and make a donation on the Just Giving page and the link is in the comments just down there. So uh, check that out as well, please. Thank you. Right, so we're done. We've got two trays of cookies. They look a bit like this. We've got about, what have we got there? 12 on each tray. Oh yes, there's an extra left for me. And so we're going to whack those into the oven at 190. Oh, oh God! How are we doing? Mm. 
So hopefully everybody's got their cookies fired up and in the oven now. Um, let me know if we're going too fast or too slow on the comments there. Um, so now we're going to try a little quiz. Hello, slightly behind. Can you recap what to do after combining the butter and sugars, please? Recap. Yes. So butter and sugar together. You're going to mix that up either in a bowl or in a mixer. Once you've got the butter and sugar together, you're going to add an egg. Uh, and whisk up that egg first before you throw it in and you're going to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract into that uh, pot as well, so into the bowl. So mix that all together. That's the wet mixture. Then in, onto that you just add uh, your uh, 225 grams of flour. plain flour uh, and just get that mixed together. Once you've done that, then you can add the, uh, the chopped chips. So, uh, or Easter egg, which is in our case just Easter egg, yeah. And you, you can always, you can always, I think, watch this along um, at a later time on YouTube. It'll be on there to watch again if you need to follow along or we haven't quite got the ingredients ready today, right now. Uh, for those who are cooking along, and whilst we wait for these cookies to cook, I'm going to put the timer on for about cookies. 10 minutes. Um, we're going to play a little game of Kahoot. So Lily's going to get her phone. And she's going to uh, take us through how we do this. So I'm going to flick over to the Kahoot screen now. So what you need to do, you need to get your phone or a tablet uh, and type in kahoot.it into your browser. And then you're going to see that game. It's going to ask you for a game pin. You're going to enter that game pin, 7712219. So, uh, to recap, 7712219. So Lily, are you going to join the game? I'm going to join and my name is going to be my name. We had like a hundred emojis, just one of you. I've joined! So Dad, no way. Mark has back, so it's kitchen envy. <laughs> so it's not normally this tired. Get out of time. Right, we're going to wait for a few more players, so join along, um, everybody. Daddy, remember they're behind. So. Team Horridge have just joined in. Wilson, good to see. Cigars, no way. Need to recap, then. No way. <laughs> that that was really funny. Glory, Grunty. Where's Monty? <gasps> Monty's coming back in. So we're just going to give it a few more minutes for those people who want to uh, get their phones out. As I said, get another browser, get a phone. Type in kahoot.it, enter this game pin, and then we'll be ready to go. But we'll give it a minute or two before we start, just for any more players who want to join to uh, to get involved. Got quite a few. Clara Dingle. Cat. Um, this is Kahoot, by the way. Uh, check it out if you've not seen it before. Kahoot.com, fantastic uh, gaming platform. You can run quizzes. You can do educational stuff on this. Great for businesses. Uh, great for training. You name it. Uh, fantastic bit of software. Uh, and uh, the team up in Norway who build this uh, are fantastic. Done a great job. And uh, it's very, very popular. So I'm pretty sure we'll all be familiar with Kahoot when we start home teaching from next week or whenever our kids get back to school. Um, I'm pretty sure most of the schools in the UK are going to be using Kahoot to, uh, to train the kids up. So uh, great, we've still got some players joining, so I'm just going to give it a few more minutes um, before we, uh, we call time on it and uh, we hit start on the quiz. Okay, right, I reckon we've got some team players who are playing along now. I'm sure loads more people will want to check out Kahoot if they're watching this, yeah. uh, not in real time. So I'm going to hit start. Start. And we'll get this uh, little quiz Boom. going. Baby animals. Oh, yes, baby animals. I love baby animals. It's a baby animal quiz. So you'll see the question coming up on the screen and then just choose an answer 
on your phone and you can just see the colored tiles. So this one, you've got to place the animals in order of gestation period, the, with the shortest being the number one and the longest being the number four. So which one has a baby quicker and which one has a baby longer? So grab the color and just drag it up into one of the gray areas. So you just literally pick a color and order them up in the right order. So which one takes the longest to have a baby? Which one is the a quickest baby? to have a baby? Oh, right, that makes sense. Who knew it was a baby? So you've got another 20 seconds or so to answer that quiz, that question. So if you haven't used this before, there's four answers there. You just drag the tiles up into the order on this one. And then you submit your you submit your answer. <clears throat> Three seconds to go. How do we get on there? Oh, well, the correct order: tiger, gorilla, giraffe, and then elephant. Well, of course, elephant we all know uh, has a very long gestation period. But um, right, next question. Someone struggling to get into. Okay, so you need to go to kahoot.it and then you type in the game pin there. So and then you have to hit play uh, and enter your name. It might still let you join the quiz um, now we've started. Otherwise, we'll have to play along and check out Kahoot uh, after this one and play along next time. So Sigurd in Norway there um, is flying into the leaderboard straight away. Let's hit the next question, see what we've got. A baby goat is called a what? A dog. Calf, kid, foal, or pup. Choose your answer, hit the colour, and away you go. So I'll just let this catch up. So hopefully everyone, I think you need to answer reasonably quickly. There's a slight lag obviously on YouTube. So um, if it isn't working, then just play home anyway and shout the answers at your computer or TV if you can't hit the answers into your, uh, into your phone. But the Moors have flown into the lead there. Um, wow. Fantastic result. Right, let's hit the next question. Um, and away we go. Question three. A red rigger, river hog, oh, I couldn't even read the question. A red river hog piglet is diurnal. That means it's most active during the day. True or false? Good work, so we've got 11 people getting that one right. Uh, well done, let's try the, uh, the next question. Let's see what the, Lord, uh, what the leaderboard's saying. Okay. Moors are still flying, a winning streak of three questions there, fantastic work. Um, Wilson, in Wilson in second and Clayton's coming up in third. So uh, right, let's go to question four. What? Before those cookies burn. Which animal communicates by making a noise called a whiz honk? There may be a clue in the picture. Yeah. Okay, hopefully you've all got your question answers in there. Um, most people know that was a hippo. Good job. Right, let's check out the leaderboard. <clears throat> <coughs> Moore's still absolutely holding that first position. Wilson's a swap round. Wilson team two, two team Wilsons. Fantastic effort there from the Wilson family. 
Okay, question five. Flamingo chicks have fluffy grey feathers that turn pink from the food they eat. What do flamingos eat in the wild? There we go. Got a bunch of answers coming in. Good work. Yes, most people know that it's shrimp and krill that makes them go pink. Uh, Lily thought it was clams. Good work, uh, but not right. Claire's okay. the highest climber. Fantastic work. Right, question six. Here we go. Every individual zebra has a unique stripe pattern. Baby zebras learn their mother's pattern to find her in the herd. True or false? Looks a bit like a barcode, doesn't it? So uh, what do you reckon? True or false? Okay, good work. Most people know that's true. Three people thought that was false. Who knew? Moore's still hanging in there, pushing ahead with a lead. And the Rose family are on a high streak there with three questions answered correctly. So. In a row. Fantastic. Okay, question seven. Animals are offered toys and puzzle feeders where they work, uh, where they work to figure out how they get food. These are examples of what? Adaptations, enrichment, diet options, and veterinary care. Tricky one, this one. What do we think? What did you go for, Lily? Lily said enrichment. Let's see. Well, we've got 12 answers in already, 13 answers in. So let's see. Yes, most people thought that was enrichment. Good work. Few people thought it was adaptations, but no, in this instance, that wasn't the right answer. Moors, they are streaking ahead. LK has popped up into second there. Good work. And Claire now in third. Uh, fantastic result. Right, let's check oh, out question Bob eight. Is the highest when animal care experts work with baby animals to do things like step on a scale to be weighed, this is called diet, behavioral husbandry, veterinary care, or observation. Okay, let's see. Zero. It's called behavioural husbandry. Who knew? Certainly not Lily. Um, Well, it looks like the Moors knew. Or well, maybe they didn't. No, they didn't. But Claire and the Claytons have come up into second and third. Uh, and they're closing the gap. This is really close now. So what question nine see? out of ten. Just two questions to go. Seahorse males are the ones who carry the babies and give birth. Is it the male seahorse that gives birth? Okay, we've got 17, 18 answers in. We're nearly done. Oh, okay. Excellent. Most people knew that, just two thought that was false. Yeah, weird that, that a male seahorse is the one that actually gives birth. Who knew? No. Right, this could, be, this could be the deciding question here for who wins. The Moors are out on front, but if they don't get it right, the Claytons could pip them to first place. Let's take a look at question 10. Dun, dun, dun. What do baby sea turtles follow to find their way to the ocean? Their mother's noises, moonlight, birds, or sunlight? Got it. That's wrong. Got it. Got a couple of seconds. 
Here we go, answers are in. Yeah, it's the yes. moonlight. Most people thought it was moonlight, a few didn't. Let's see if this has uh, an impact on the leaderboard. Here's the podium. Third place. Yay! LK. Second place, Clayton's. And in first place, it's the Moors. Fantastic. Well, Great job, the Moors. Good fun there. So do check out Kahoot. Uh, do check out the Lily Foundation website and do check out the link at the bottom of this video here to see how you can give a little bit of money to the, the Lily Foundation uh, via their Just Giving page. But let's go check out those cookies and see how they're doing. And if you have any mixture, make sure you do eat it. You don't want good mixture to go to waste. There we go. I'd say they look pretty good. What? Two trays. What's cool? Two trays of cookies. Hopefully yours look something like that, or will look something like that when you cook them. So uh, we'll let those cool. We'll leave them just to one side, let them cool down a bit, and then we'll eat them. And get very fat. So I think that's about it. Um, thank you from me. Thank you from Lily. Thank you from Poppy, who's fallen asleep. It was that exciting. Um, and thank you from the Lily Foundation. Thanks for all your amazing support. Thanks for donating. Check out their website. Check out the link below. And we'll see you guys very soon. Follow, subscribe, comment. Like, share. Like, share. See you all soon. <laughs>